Hey, right on. I'm Charlie Craven with uh, Charlie's Fly Box, and I'm going to tie you a uh, little fly I've been fishing for years and years um, that has uh, suddenly become a lot more popular than it used to be. It's always been a popular fly, but uh, everybody's kind of hot on it these days. And um, this is the uh, squirrel leech, and uh, this was back at, uh, from back in the day when I was guiding and uh, before I got good at naming flies. So, um, this is a fly made from squirrel fur to imitate a leech, so it uh, is called a squirrel leech. And uh, uh, what I'm going to do is tie this on a 2457 Tiemco. Um, this is a size 12, and I have, you know, in, in recent times tied this in smaller sizes as well, down to a 16. Um, and I've got a tungsten bead on there. This is a copper tungsten bead, 330 seconds, I believe, is the size on that one. Um, and I'm going to start off with some 6 unit unithread in rusty brown. I'll tie you a kind of a rusty colored leech. Uh, but I'm going to take this unit thread, I'm going to start it behind the bead, and I only want to wrap back to about the point on the hook. And I'll dress that shank pretty solidly right there. Um, the first thing I'm going to tie down is just a strand of red flashaboo. And you can use red or gold, I've sort of experimented with different colors. Um, I'm going to tie that down with three or four turns. You can see it's dangling back there. Um, and this front end, I'll fold back and catch it with a couple turns, and then I'll trim it off. So I just want a single strand there. Um, that turn just right, you can see it. There it is. Um, just a little bit of subtle flash. And now for the tail, this is a super easy fly, I should mention. You're about to find out. Um, I'm going to take a strip of whatever color squirrel you want, whatever color leech you want to tie. Uh, I'm going to take a strip of squirrel hide in that color and I'm going to tuck this piece of squirrel, you can see I've got it by the head in there I'm going to tuck this right up against the back of the bead and catch catch it and bind it down and I don't want to leave much space here, I'm going to kind of leave a tight little neck and I want to leave a pretty short tail so I always trim these after the fact. I don't trim the pieces ahead of time. I'll part that fur and come in and trim just the leather so we don't have a square in there. And I'll trim that flash just a touch longer. You can kind of wet that down to smooth it back out of the way, like so. And now for the collar, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a little dubbing loop here. It's not going to be very long. I'm going to take my Dynaking dubbing whorl and I'll build just, it's probably two or three inches long. So I'm going to make a loop. Get that up there where you can see it. I'm going to cross the thread around it to close that loop. And then I'll slide my material spring up on my vise and I'll put one leg in the material spring. You can see that holds that loop open. So now what I'll do is I'm going to take that same strip and I'm going to pull off a clump of fur here. And what I want to do first is kind of pull it out at a right angle to the hide. And I'll grab that clump and hold it tightly and pull the skin away from it. So I've just pulled the hair out of the hide. And I'll take my dubbing loop and I'll put this fur in that loop. Like so. Now you can see, actually with this camera you can really see it. That's nice. Um, there's some little stubs of that hide left on there. So I'll come in and trim those out with my scissors. I'm going to pinch the dubbing loop just under that fur and spin my whorl. And what that's going to do is make a nice little furry chenille, like so. I'm going to use that as the collar. Um, so as I wrap this, I want to treat this like a soft tackle. So I'm going to make a turn, sweep it back, another turn, sweep it back. And I want to jam this right up to the bead. Um, but you don't want to overdo it. It shouldn't be too heavily dressed. And then I'll tie that off just behind the bead with a couple good tight turns. And then I can trim that loop out, wet my fingers a bit, and sweep this back. And just enough of a little thread head there behind the, the bead to clean things up. And then I will whip finish. Just a few turns there. And you could use a, a hot spot color thread. You could use a brighter color thread there if you wanted to add a little little heat to it. I kind of use my dubbing brush to just pick everything back and sweep everything back where it needs to go. And that is a simple little squirrel leech. This is a fly that 
gosh, I, I don't even know how long I've been fishing it. Umpus carried it for quite some time. Um, back back in my 20s, I was fishing this fly. Um, but a, a great little fly, both for still water. Um, it's, a, it's an awesome fly to sight fish with uh, when you see fish cruising in lakes and ponds. Um, but also in rivers, uh, you know, any place that you'd fish a, a sand on worm when the water's a little higher or coming up, um, a leech like this can uh, can do wonders. Um, typically tied in black, olive, purple, rust, um, you know, even kind of oranges and reds. Um, this is a, a really effective little fly. Pretty simple, you know, it doesn't take long to tie. Uh, we'll put a little shot of head cement there behind that bead just to lock things down. But that is Craven Squirrel Leech. Uh, that was my contribution to the flies that suck category. Um, And there you have it. So I hope you like that one tied up. Uh, you know, keep in mind you can uh, you could alternate colors too. You could do a, a brown tail with a black collar or a black tail with a brown collar, kind of mix it up a little bit. Leeches do have some variegation to them. Um, I've had particularly good luck with uh, uh, olive with a natural collar, um, but you can you can mix that up however you like. But really a cool little fly, pretty quick and easy to tie. Hope you like it. Uh, go put it to work. See if you can't catch a fish.